Hi everybody, this is Mr. Jurgens, and welcome to our first chemistry podcast of the year. Chemistry, what is it? It's the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. And don't forget, chem is try. Today's lesson topics will include the categories of science, the branches of chemistry, and types of data. And then after this, we'll cover these other topics down, found down below. According to our book, there are two main categories of science. They're pure science and applied science. So if you look at these two fellows over here on the right side of the screen, you know the person on top, that's Albert Einstein. And the person down below, maybe you know him too, he's Isaac Newton. And those two people might very well be considered to be pure scientists or basic researchers, perhaps. They were not trying to come up with a new material or anything, but they are just interested in science. The love of science drove them, and so they might be considered pure scientists. Now, in chemistry, lots of times we might be applied scientists, and we have a goal in mind. And our goal might be to solve a problem or to produce a product. For example, if you have an iPod, perhaps you want a case that uh, fits on it. And uh, if you're going to design a case, you have to think about uh, it has to be tough and durable, and it has to conduct electricity from your finger to the screen to the icons on the, on the screen. Perhaps you want to build a tire that is durable and gets good gas mileage and is very, very safe. It has good traction and sells for a reasonable price. Now to do this, you might need a huge apparatus like this petroleum refinery that you see in the picture. According to our book, there are seven branches of chemistry, and I've added an eighth one on here. So the seven branches of chemistry include organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry, analytical chemistry, biochemistry, theoretical chemistry, nuclear chemistry, and chemical engineering. Wow, those are big mouthfuls, aren't they? But we'll see if we can take them slow and try and understand them. The first branch of chemistry is called organic chemistry, and it involves carbon-containing compounds. Well, there's a famous molecule called benzene that consists of one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms with six hydrogen atoms. And uh, because there's so many carbon atoms involved in this molecule, we would consider this to be an organic chemical. Uh, so plastics, such as the plastic that makes up this terrifying dinosaur, fuels such as octane in gasoline, that would be organic chemistry as well. So the next category is called inorganic chemistry, which means that there's no carbon, or at least there's very little carbon. So if you look at this beautiful azurite right here, this is a mineral or a rock that has lots of copper in it. Or if you take a look at this lovely crystal of silica right here, or silicon dioxide, those have very little carbon in them, so we just call that inorganic chemistry. So uh, metals, catalysts, ceramics, minerals, things like that involved in inorganic chemistry. The next is physical chemistry, which involves the properties and changes of matter and the energy involved. So right here I have a hand warmer, and when I click the little snapper right here, this is giving off some nice heat to keep my hands nice and warm as the as the chemical crystallizes. So physical chemistry refers to the properties and changes of matter and the energy involved. Melting points, boiling points, energy of explosives, that kind of thing, that's all in, studied in physical chemistry. Analytical chemistry refers to the composition and concentration of chemicals. Here I have a pH meter, and the pH meter is being used right now to analyze the pH of liquid. The next branch of chemistry in, is biochemistry, the chemistry of living organisms. Now, perhaps the most famous of all of the biochemicals is DNA, the famous double helix, which you know is made up of A's and T's and G's and C's, and each one of these, these nucleotides is, consists of other chemicals. So there's lots of carbons and nitrogen and phosphorus and oxygen atoms in this. So biochemistry, the chemistry of living organisms, nutrition, proteins, drugs, DNA, all those things are within the realm of biochemistry. Theoretical chemistry tries to get at the reasons for chemical properties and reactions. So, so why is it that this molecule has the shape just like this, this tetrahedral shape? They use quantum mechanics and they use equations like E equals MC squared and they're trying to understand the fundamental laws of chemistry. The next is nuclear chemistry. And if I take this radiation monitor, or Geiger counter, and I put it next to this Fiesta Ware plate, we can hear that there's lots of radiation being given off by this. So the radiation is probably coming from the nucleus of some of the atoms in the plate. And the nucleus has protons and neutrons in it, but not electrons. Nuclear chemistry 
is important, of course, when we talk about nuclear power, nuclear weapons, and also health, for example, how we use radiation to try to rid the body of cancer. The last category is not found in your book, but I added it because I think it's rather important. And this is chemical engineering, <clears throat> and that refers to the designing of chemicals and materials. So polymers, such as plastics that are on your iPhone, if you have one, or ceramics, such as my mug is a ceramic, alloys, such as the tin alloy, and you can hear that it actually snaps as it, as it bends, uh, composites, which are things you know, where you put together several different types of chemicals, and fuels, those are all things that might be chemically engineered. So those are the branches of chemistry. We have one more topic to consider today. We'll be collecting data many, many times this year, and typically we'll be collecting one of two types of data, and they would be quantitative or qualitative data. Quantitative data refers to numerical data. So if you see lots of numbers, for example, if you measured the table and found that its length is 1.892 meters, you have numbers there, so those are quantities, and that would be quantitative data. If you look at the table in the bottom left corner, corner down here, you can see that there's lots of numbers down there, so that's all quantitative data. Qualitative data is also important in science. Qualitative refers to observations that typically don't have numbers or not very many numbers attached to them. That might include warmth or color or texture or odor or taste. This middle picture I put there to help remind us that qualitative and quantitative research are like you know the two sides of the coin that we need to consider in our studies. So let's take a look at what we did today. We looked at the categories of science. There would be pure science, knowledge for its own sake, or applied science, which means we have a goal in mind. We want to build something, or we want to produce a product or solve a problem. The next thing that we did was we looked at the branches of chemistry, and there are eight branches of chemistry that I would ask you to know. And they include organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry, analytical chemistry, biochem, theoretical chemistry, nuclear chemistry, and the last one, chemical engineering. And then we did one last topic, and that was the types of data. And there are two types of data, quantitative data and qualitative data. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to stop in anytime or email me or give me a call.